Welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we are speaking with Maria Neumeyer. Hi, Maria. Hi, Chuki. Um, where are you based, and what do you do? Um, I'm based in London, mm-hmm. and I'm an Android developer uh, currently working at Deliveroo. Great. And how do you get started on Android? So I was studying mobile computing, uh, so I already started in mobile, and I then kind of by accident got thrown into Android during my internship when oh. they asked me randomly, can you do Android? And I was like, okay, if I have to, and then actually enjoyed it. So. And then you're like, you know what, I will do it now as a choice. Yeah. Uh, so today we want to talk about not necessarily Android, but how do you collaborate in a team? Because most team, when we code, we try to put in co-review a process so that you get a chance to get feedback from others and then learn from each other. So I'm kind of wondering, how do you do it? Uh, yeah, so we do code reviews on everything that goes into the code base. So mm-hmm. everything gets reviewed before we merge. Um, so we make sure that there's nothing, like no issues that you spot or maybe you know, some kind of like coding guideline that we follow that isn't... So do you use GitHub? Yeah, we use GitHub for pull requests and everything. So So. usually it's like one person make a pull request and then assign it to another person to review it and then you comment on the... Yeah, so we we do currently two reviewers. Oh, two reviewers, okay. Um, Because we're a bigger team, so Uh uh, it's good to have input from multiple Multiple people. people. Mm -hmm. Um, And... Yeah, we, we we used to just throw it into Slack and uh-huh. whoever had time looked at it. Oh. But then it But like, what if no one has time then no one exactly. looks at it? So yeah, yeah, we had problems where, you know, people didn't look at pull requests and it took a while. So we started to assigning to people mm-hmm. um and also kind of like put up a few not really rules, but like right. try to when you stop working on a ticket that you actually start look at code reuse because, you know, p- chances are there are other people waiting for it. And right. So do you have a time. notion of like someone being blocked and try to make it a priority to do a pull request? Because to be honest, us developers like to code. Yeah. Like anything that's not coding, we tend to <laughs> avoid doing it while we can. So I can imagine, you know, everybody just has down trying to implement their own feature and they ignore the pull request. Yeah, I think yeah. that's like, you, you're like, oh, I want to code. And when you yeah. finish your ticket, you're like, oh, I want to do this next thing. But right. it's good to actually stop because all the other things that you're doing around mm-hmm. that, like, that is not coding is also really important work. And So you kind of use the the finishing of a ticket as a, a almost milestone. Yeah. This, is, this is the time when you should not pick up a new ticket, but go and make sure that the other pull requests get uh, looked at. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And other things like, you know, maybe QA needs help with something or right. maybe some tickets need some more descriptions, things like that. Yeah. Just like all the things outside of development where right. you don't really... Well, you the forget to exactly. do it. Exactly. You're like, <laughs> They're conveniently. I'll do that later. Exactly, meaning never. <laughs> yeah. So it's good to have some guidelines mm. to, well, you know, it's almost like a reminder, right? That you, you put in into that rhythm. It's like, well, I finished my ticket and then, no, 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 don't take the next yeah. one yet. Let's see what other things that need to be done. So when you do that kind of like quality control for like, you know, pull requests is kind of one way to do it. Do you have other things as well? Like maybe lynch rules or maybe some pre-submit checks and like automated testing, anything around uh, that? Yeah, well? so we have automated testing. Mm-hmm. Um, that is also part of the code review is, is mm-hmm. this tested and if not, maybe right. add some tests. Um, do you use code coverage to make sure things are tested? Uh, or it's more like yeah, manual? It's, we, we do use it, but it's not like, you know, you like need to maintain rule. that, uh, like, a certain number. It's uh-huh. more like to see if we drop and actually we shouldn't do that. So okay. maybe we need to think of that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I always try to get Lint to work. Yeah. And it's always like, oh, yes, it works. And then mm-hmm. we change something and then it breaks, like right. modularizing the app and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because I personally actually don't really run Lint locally, but I run it on the CI. Mm. So sometimes, because I, mean, I actually have a lot of espresso tests, so it takes a long time to run the yeah. test. But I'm like, oh, wow, this build is super fast. What happens? Like, oh, Lint failed. That's, <laughs> that's what happened. But at least um, this way I can get a very quick feedback. So, um, any other just kind of general tip on how do you make 
an effective like pull request just in terms of both the person that's coding and the person that's reviewing? Uh, yeah, so we try to add lots of comments mm. just because it's useful to know why did you do this and like the areas that you should focus on. Like sometimes you the do comment in the code or in the code in review? In the code review. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just for the reviewer to know mm -hmm. what you need to do, uh, we try to add a good description. Um, ideally images if it's some oh. UI based things, so screenshots. So you put the images in, in the, the description. description. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. You can do it on yeah. Git. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't re yeah, on GitHub, I, I, I never thought of putting images in, in the, I don't know why not, but I will do that because um, we use the GitHub issues to track both bugs and feature mm. requests. And then I will happily upload images to describe yeah. like, this is why, you know, this needs to be done. Like, oh yeah, of course. Like you can use images in the description too. Random little things that yeah. you learn. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And yeah, it's good because then you know what this actually looks like and right. what you want to achieve. And it's much easier to review something. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I. I should start doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So I hope now it's working much better now that you have a little bit more kind of guideline. Yeah, I don't just... have to wait for my pull requests or for code reviews anymore. It's good. Yeah, that's great. And just kind of curious, how big the, is the team since you said the... Um, um, so people? yeah, we, we have three apps, but okay. um, I, I work on the consumer app and uh -huh. we're six people at the moment. Okay, so six people. So basically at any given time, three people are involved in one piece of code because one yeah. person wrote it and the other two are looking at yeah. it. So you have a pretty good like of knowledge sharing and yeah, exactly. also people have kind of a high level of what's happening in the app. Because I can imagine sometimes if you kind of get into this corner and then you and this other buddy are working on yeah. this and then maybe you went on vacation and somebody needs to come out come in and say, oh, I don't know yeah. what is this. So it's good to have that um, awareness in the team. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your, sharing your uh, tips. And uh, if people want to follow you on the internet, where can they find you? Uh, Twitter is probably the easiest. Mm -hmm. um, it's Maria Neum, so my first name and the four yeah, we'll first put letters of right my last here. name. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.